we want to talk to you about creative manifestation. Everybody take a moment and think about a need or want you have that seems so unattainable, you just cannot figure out how to get it. Oh man, it's so hard. <laughs> well, I would like to suggest that the answers you're looking for lie in the mandala of creative manifestation here behind us. This mandala represents actions of creativity directed towards changing our world for the better. Like, like ripples of water or waves of sound, these creative actions radiate out into our world, creating beauty and inspiring others to do the same. It shoots out in many different directions, emphasizing the strength and diversity and the power of polyculture. But how do we make this thing? We needed space, we needed tools, we needed skills, we needed creativity. Which brings us to the question, what is creative manifestation? Well, we broke it down into three easy steps. One, see the need in your world. Two, envision a solution to your problems. Three, source the materials and skills from your community. Bring your dreams to life. It's just that easy. <laughs> <laughs> Gustav, hit us with the backstory. I want to give you a short uh, uh, history of... Uh, a place that Richard and I have uh, with a couple of fellows uh, named Manifestation PDX. Uh, ten years ago, I rented a little space in a warehouse uh, to make art and made some room for other people to do the same. Uh, along came Richard, and I found that we shared in the uh, ideas about uh, the functionality, the uh, uh, aesthetics, and the ethics about how we make art. Uh, using uh, junk, rubbish, what some people would consider garbage, was a huge part of that. Um, we got together and we found that we could make things together much better than we could alone, and we exploded. <laughs> kind of like that. <laughs> Soon our mantra became, we need a bigger shop. <laughs> At the same time, we recognized there were a couple other very talented <clears throat> folks who wanted to join us in this. Uh, enter. My father, Jeff Colley, third generation blacksmith, returning to his roots, pounding the red hot iron. <laughs> And our longtime friend, J.B. Knoll, who not only uh, filters used vegetable oil to go in our veggie oil vehicles, but is also very knowledgeable in the theory and cultivation of medical THC. Uh, he, is also our <laughs> he is also our rock star pizza maker at Manifestation. Kind of goes hand in hand. Uh, <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> and uh, so we formed together and uh, we, we made a place called Manifestation PDX uh, because that's what we find we do. Uh, we manifest a creative reality through community collaboration. As of now, manifestation houses uh, welding, blacksmithing, uh, glass blowing. Uh, we have a cargo bike building and CNC machining. Uh, we have a small uh, 3D printing lab. Uh, there's a foundry there. Uh, we've got uh, fabric design and uh, Stumptown kilts, which is what I'm wearing today. They do their sales out of there. Uh, ceremonial tattooing. Um, a community music room, it goes on, and it's all within 8,000 square feet. We want to tell you a few stories about creative manifestation in our world. The Dougie Center is an art therapy clinic that helps kids cope with death and dying, but in 2009, it burned down. So they had a need for a donor appreciation monument to honor all those who helped in the rebuild. We had a vision of the Tree of Hope, an interactive um, art piece that had all the, pieces, the, the people that donated as a leaf or branch on the sculpture, and the kids could interact with it in their art therapy exercises. There's even a little frog in the trunk of the tree, and they can write little message, messages down, feed it to their lost loved ones on the other side to encourage them to interact with death without fear. To emphasize the cycle of life and death, we use recycled bits from the previous building in the sculpture. Another project is the, uh, the dragon at the front gate of the Oregon Country Fair. It sits guard there. Uh, the Oregon Country Fair is a platform for people to gather and uh, discuss important things like life through communication, through uh, a conversation, music, food, dance, art. Uh, uh, the Oregon Country Fair had a, or the Oregon Country Fair draws about uh, hundreds of thousands of people every year. And um, a couple years ago, the dragon had burned also, uh, mm. so we were asked uh, by the Oregon Country Fair, the Oregon Country Fair had a need to build a new dragon. Uh, and Richard and myself and a, and a, a group of people, uh, architects, woodworkers, 
uh, stone setters, there were fabric uh, enthusiasts, lighting technicians, young and old, skilled and unskilled. Uh, we all got together and we uh, envisioned a solution to rebuild the dragon using um, uh, recycled products from the Oregon Country Fairgrounds. We used um, old barrels for the scales, tin roofing, rusty gas cans, crutches, uh, wheelchair parts, which was important because the Dragon was also a booth that served as a contact point for altar-abled folks to be able to get around the fair a little easier. Uh, it was a lot of people that came together. We made an amazing Dragon, um, and it truly took a village. It did indeed. Our next example is Rockette the Rocket Girl. Deschutes Brewery came to us last year and said, hey guys, I want you to enter our steampunk beer machine contest. <laughs> okay, there's our need. So we had a vision <laughs> of a Metropolis-style robot girl riding a rocket made of beer. So we needed material. So we headed off to Goodwill and we hunted and gathered all the shiny pots and pans and futuristic-looking junk we could possibly scavenge. And then we went to our community at Manifestation and said, hey guys, can you help me make these robot eyes blink? Or do you know how I can make sure the beer doesn't foam up when it shoots out of these robot nipples? <laughs> it's a problem. <laughs> you wouldn't believe the foam. Oh my God. So sure enough, we used our combined skills and we created a sculpture so awesome, we won the contest. It really, yeah. Okay. It, it was an amazing piece, and uh, another thing that was really amazing about it was that we, there were so many people involved in it, we got to uh, share ideas, and uh, it, came, it came out amazing. It was, it was something um, incredible. So. Indeed. Uh, this cob oven we built with the Village Building Convergence, which is a local permaculture festival that happens every year here in Portland, Oregon. People come out and beautify the, their city by painting the streets, building little structures, all kinds of awesome stuff. So we had a need to turn the industrial wasteland of our shop into a warm, inviting place that fed our community with not only art and music, but with food. So we uh, put it out to the community, and we all got together and pounded the dirt, claw, or uh, straw, and sand, and whatnot, and built this incredible cob oven. Thanks, guys. <laughs> uh, what's next? What, what's in our future here? We're the gonna... future. Yeah. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. I want to create more large-scale art that inspires people to manifest their own reality. Yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> let's keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Bigger, better, faster, more. Yeah, we, you know, we all, all have that. wants and we all have needs uh, in life, and if you uh, can recognize those needs, uh, envision a solution, uh, then, and look into your community for um, resources, everyone has the power to, to do this. Um, you too can manifest your own reality through uh, creative manifestation. Thank you. It's as easy as one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs>